This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. is the ramble and we go until midnight tonight ladies and gentlemen over there is the countenance that is walter sabo hello walter also known on the air as walter sterling alex it is an honor to be with you i am humbled to be on with you because mm-hmm. yeah you were nominated to be in the radio hall of fame yes and that happens to be a very big deal because I'm on the nominating committee, as yeah. are many others. And when your name came up, it was probably for me, when the name came up, Alex Bennett, what was interesting is that not one person on that committee of 20 raised any objection at all. It was instantly, oh, yes, of course. And you were instantly nominated. Wow, that's very nice. I'd like to say it's a pleasure to be nominated, but it'd be more of a pleasure to have won. But anyway, you it's know. you know it's a complex voting system, so the the nomination mm. is a win. The nomination is a win. Okay, well I I can call myself a Radio Hall of Fame nominee, Alex Bennett. Then right, I would. Yeah, uh, you know, but I mean it it uh, it's just I don't know I don't. I don't like those things when they turn into a contest, you know? I mean, um, uh, I don't think the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is in your neck of the woods, yeah. um, uh, is, um, I believe, does not take an audience vote in order to determine it. One slot is an audience vote. Okay. But I don't like the rock and roll hall of fame because tragically i know who runs that um that voting who runs that competition it's Mm -hmm. not the museum it's not the museum Mm -hmm. it's a bunch of guys in new york and who have nothing to do with the museum and the museum has nothing to do with the hall of fame nominees and inductees and it is heavily heavily weighted in favor of fans of the who (laughs) <laughs> it is heavily, it is, I swear. Of, uh, I love that. Fans of the, the who. Heavily weighted in, in favor of fans of Jimmy Page, the sacred Jimmy Page. Yeah. Uh, Dionne Warwick is not on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Please explain to me how that is possible. Well, isn't there, who else? There was somebody else they mentioned that was, I guess this year, they, they have this year, they have for the, you know, that one slot or whatever, a whole bunch of nominees. And I'm going, why haven't all of those people already been inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame or the, uh, what do you call it, the Music Hall of Fame. Uh, Now, I know that the Sports Hall of Fame is voted upon by uh, sports writers. Okay, that makes a little more sense. I just don't like it when they turn it into a contest. Oh, the public should vote here, you know. No, I mean, the public, for instance, if you do a public vote on the Radio Hall of Fame, doesn't know who the hell Alex Bennett is unless they're from San Francisco or New York, you know. Uh, but if there's somebody that's syndicated, they're better known. You know. A fact. It's a total fact. Right. Um, now, when you say you're going to put somebody in the Radio Hall of Fame, I would say, who are you putting in and what did they contribute to the overall history right. of, of broadcasting? So when I- so when names come up and I'm on the nominating committee and I'm not saying my judgment is sacred, but this is what I'm saying Mm -hmm. is that I always stop them. If like they've spent 50 years on the air in Philadelphia, I say, this is a national radio hall of fame. It should not be based on one, you know, being a success in one market. In other words, to me, they did their job. If they're a success in one market, they did their job. And what I pointed out with you were the number of cities you were in, and the number of formats that you were in. I said he was in three distinct formats in like five or six cities. He was a winner in every city. 
that's a National Radio Hall of Fame nominee. That's mm-hmm. where it makes sense. But some guys, you know, who have been 40 years in Philadelphia, waking up Philadelphia, to me, is like, oh, so they did their well, job. Well, that's who that's won. nice, but there's a Philadelphia Hall of Fame. There's a Pennsylvania Hall of Fame. Yeah. Keep them there. Well, the guys who won this year were at the morning show in Philadelphia, right? It started a fight. What do you mean it started a fight? I said, what are we doing? <laughs> oh, that's the one that you were referring to then. Yeah, but it's ha- it happens every year. You know, yeah. it happens every year. Yeah. Uh, Unless in that city they broke ground. They did something that had never been done before and therefore was copied endlessly. Um, that's different. If I'm not mistaken, it took them many years to nominate uh, Howard Stern, long after he was well-known nationally. Yes, and his opinion was, and I agreed with it, and I wasn't on the committee then, but when it started... His opinion was there. It is not a radio hall of fame unless I'm in it. And he was right. And he's right. And he he should have been in the first class. He said, find me somebody more successful than me in history. And, and his objectively, he was right. Well, he objectively, he was right. Uh, I mean, I can think of people, for instance, that should be in, in the hall of fame. I don't think the name Don Sherwood is there. Who is perhaps one of the? It is. It is. It is in the yes, Hall of Fame. Oh, okay, good, good. Yeah. You know, because it, it, there are certain people that are legendary in their markets. Because you know, before syndication, you only stayed in one market if you were successful, and you own that market, and so you really have to go back to those people too. You know. What was interesting in the Don Sherwood era. Mm-hmm. Don Sherwood, only, by the way, let me tell people who don't know. Don Sherwood sorry. was in San Francisco doing mornings at KSFO and perhaps in my mind the most successful single broadcaster in any market in the United States. And yet if you asked his son, his son, what did he do? Mm-hmm. His son would tell you if you heard him now, you would say he didn't do very much. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It was... It was like, you know, slap on the back, neighbor over the fence, but nothing really that cutting edge. It was just consistently perfect for that moment in time. And he, um, but at that moment in time, and it was really interesting, you said if they were six big successful in that market, in a given market, mm-hmm. inevitably, if their success uh, caught people at people's attention in other cities and they moved to another city mm-hmm. inevitably they fail it was all about a single act at mm-hmm. a single moment in time in a specific city many many towns oh he were, was he was san francisco yes he was he oozed san francisco um and uh but i would disagree with his son i think there was more to don sherwood than that i was a big fan oh there goes the robo call uh, anyway, <laughs> yours just went off, too. Yes, but I know it's not a real call. It's, yeah, I know. Anyway, uh, uh, Don Sherwood, uh, I think, was more than that. He, he, I was, I was a fan, and he was an influence on me, on how you do radio. In fact, he was nice enough once I wrote him and I said, I would love to come down and see your radio show. I'm such a big fan and I want to be in radio and blah, 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 blah. And he invited me down and I sat there in the studio with him while he was doing his show. That's a score. Yeah. he That's how big a fan I was of his. And he had a lot of influence on me. And what that influence was is that Don Sherwood brought into the studio what he witnessed and felt on the street. Okay, his life came into that studio and then he talked about his life, you know, and that was the element of my act that, you know, that I got from Sherwood is that it's very important to talk about yourself, that the prep for your show isn't sitting down and reading newspapers and doing this and jotting this down and saying, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. It's the life you live every day. And then when you walk into that studio, you bring it in with you. So I, I agree. I, th- I think he had more substance than his son says. I agree. And I try to do that with my show. Think about all the big syndicated acts today yeah. and how little you know about their life, 
How do they have a cat, a dog? What are the names of the children? You don't no, know. You don't, you don't know. No. You don't know. And why would I buy a why would I buy an Acura from somebody whose names I don't know? I mean, that's what they're doing. They're doing live reads, and I don't know who the hell they are. So um, I also find that it sets up if you do it right, it sets up the power of the mirror, and there's nothing more powerful than talking to someone about themselves, mm -hmm. which you can do if you talk about yourself honestly. So what do I talk about? I talk about the fact that my kid has apraxia, but I do more than that. I have her come on the air with me and review, um, um, oh darn it, what's the name of the show where people open up uh, storage lockers and go storage through Storage wars? Storage wars, storage wars. Yeah. So I watch storage wars with my nine-year-old mm -hmm. and then I put her on with me and I say, let's talk about that show. Do you like those people? No, I think they're inappropriate. Do you like the stuff they find? No, it looks terrible. So she talks about Storage Wars, and then she she cheered off, and she said, that show you watch where everybody, everything they say is beep, that one, the beep on the boat? I yeah. mean, I said, you mean below deck Mediterranean? Yeah. She, says, she says, yeah, very inappropriate, she says, but she does it with a speech impediment. And um, so she's very entertaining. And I talk about the fact that we have three cats. My wife hates the cats. And then my biggest challenge in life, mm -hmm. in life, is the the uh, uh, check engine light has never gone off. In my car, the check engine light has never <laughs> gone off, and we're up to about three thousand dollars to get the check engine light to go off. And, and, and you take the car it, in, and they fix it and everything, right? They do what they have to do. Multiple times, multiple. Well, garages, then they're supposed to turn. They're supposed to turn off the check engine light. Right. The problem with them turning off the check engine light is that will last, if they don't make the repair, that'll last about a day. And if you go to a good inspection station and they stick the thing in your car, they know what you've done. Mm -hmm. They say, did you just have this fixed? And I go, oh, no, 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 no. Well, there's something wrong with this. And then the next day it goes back on. And I can't get it inspected until the check engine light goes off. No, really? Really? I thought that check engine light was like, uh, you know, it was there as a, a, a service to the driver. It's time to check your engine or whatever. But I don't feel served. Well, I, you know, I never, I never, I ne they never denied me a, a, you know, new license for my car or whatever because I did, because my check engine light was on. Yeah. In Ohio, they will not give you, even before, when I pull in, they look at my dash and say, you will not pass if one of those lights is on. That's it. So how, how do you get your car to pass? It doesn't. <laughs> now, the gift of the, the uh, epidemic mm -hmm. is that the uh, government of Ohio is looking the other way for all of those infractions. They're like, we know you can't get your car fixed at this time. We know it's hard to get it inspected. They're just mm -hmm. not looking. But that's going to end very soon. Like the next time I'm stopped, it will end. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I hate owning a car, by the yeah. way. The, my favorite car is the is the four or five or six. That's my favorite car. And I've never had a better car than the four or five or six. What do you mean the four or five or six? Uh, what's it called? The big brand is Subway. That's my favorite car. Oh, Subway. Oh, I see. Yes. Oh, OK. I, yeah. I'm sorry. I hate, I hate owning a car. I don't have good car karma all my life my cars break down all my life mm -hmm. it's the biggest waste of money for me i know there are car people well, people who enjoy owning yeah. a car but not me you didn't own a car when you lived in new york did you my current wife because she grew up in ohio and because we had kids mm -hmm. wanted a minivan i said mm -hmm. you don't understand how much waste this is going to be involving this will be six hundred dollars a month for the garage or worse thousands of hours circling blocks going way to the west side, parking it on a pier. You have no idea. And then if it breaks down, God help you. And she, she, was from, she was from Ohio. So she Practically came here so. and then she yeah. was, well, you know, when I first came here years ago, I owned a car in New York. Number, yeah. A couple of reasons why. I was a California kid. I had to have a car. Right. You know, and uh, as years have gone on, I finally, when I came out here the next time, I went, well, 
I sold my car in California and uh, I don't think I'm going to get a car. And I really haven't missed having a car. But right. the problem is I also don't leave Manhattan very often no. either. No. You know. No, the other problem is that the expense of owning a car is uh, outmatched by the expense of renting a car in Manhattan. It's yes. crazy what they charge. Well, renting a car was reasonable a few years ago when I rented my last one. I go to Hertz, I get it for the weekend, it would cost me about 200 bucks. I finally decided you don't do the weekend because if you do a whole week, it's cheaper than if you do three days. So I, what we were gonna do the next time was rent it for a week and then go yeah. where we go for three days and then travel around for a while. But anyway, right. uh, the point is that I've never had a reason to own a car in New York because right. uh, exactly what you say. To begin with, you gotta pay for the car. Maybe you're making payments on that car. Then you gotta, then you, then you have to, uh, uh, once you're making the payments, you have to get the insurance, which is much more expensive in New York City than it is at anywhere in the United States. I don't even know how much it is anymore, but I'm sure it amounts to several hundred dollars a month. All right. It was 400 a month when I had a car. In New York. Okay, 400 York. a month. Then you've got the parking, which, as you say, is anywhere between four and $600 a month. Right. So, I mean, you you know, and then you don't use it because you live in Manhattan and you take a subway or, or a lift or whatever. You don't drive down somewhere because then you have to find a parking space or you have to put it in a garage at 50 bucks an hour, you know. So, I mean, it, so here's what happened. So I haven't had a car. So then COVID comes along. And the last time we used a car was about four years ago when we drove up to Vermont. I have this feeling I, I, I don't know how to drive anymore. I, I fear it. Uh, you know, getting into a car and this big thing, I am trying to negotiate around. So I'm, I don't know whether I can drive any longer. Now, the good news for you is because of where you live yeah. and because I have visited you and I've driven to where you are, mm -hmm. um, two blocks away from you, mm -hmm is a ten dollar a day garage <laughs> it's but, but, uh, but remember it's on, remember that's 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 three hundred dollars a week no a no month, i know rather, but i'm saying for a, a day if somebody came to visit you or you rented a car and you needed to park it it's ten dollars a day on a hundred and fourth street hundred and fourth street okay uh block east and the um and it's a good garage, so it's nice that it's there. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other thing that uh, out of towners from New York don't can't even believe is a parking ticket in in Manhattan or Brooklyn starts at a hundred dollars. Does it really? Oh, it God. starts at a hundred dollars and gets worse from there. But you're not going to pay less than a hundred bucks. And then, if by some magic you get towed, let me tell you where you get towed. You get towed to a scary hurricane fenced in parking lot in Brooklyn that is ingeniously at the edge of the river. So one side is the fence, the other side is the river. <laughs> so you're not going to get that car out of there uh, by magic. And oh gee, the giant dog is near your car. So it's terrifying to retrieve your car. Well, the thing is that they used to have the uh, towing place it was down at the uh, bottom of 57th Street. Yeah, that's not that's yeah, that that's was... that's for rich people. You're going to be towed to Brooklyn. <laughs> well, I'm not being towed anywhere because I don't no. have a car. OK, no. you know, but um, so. So, you know, I mean, but what, we're getting back to what we were talking about. This is exactly the kind of thing that you, you talk about and I talk about. But I find that my problem has been since since COVID. I have nothing to talk about because I'm basically in the house all the time. You know, and it's and it, and I don't have any kids to bring on to talk about TV shows, so I find I I've been robbed of my essence by not having much of a life experience going on right now. Well, what I did with that, and you're welcome mm -hmm. to borrow, mm -hmm. is um, I talked about the fact that finally the rest of society has caught up to my fantasy which is to sit in a very comfortable chair all day and watch episode after episode of any given TV show that I'm obsessed with now. 
Mm-hmm. So I, I, when this hit, I was in heaven. I'm like, oh, finally, I don't have to go outside. Finally, I don't have to pretend to be active. I can just sit here and I'm doing good deed. It's like jury duty. I can just sit here. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the few people who has never complained about jury duty because to me, it seemed like an ideal way to pay, pay the day. I can sit. Everybody thinks I'm doing something normal. Mm -hmm. Over there is Chinatown. At lunch, I go to Chinatown. I couldn't be happier than to go to Chinatown. Yeah. And, And then I go home and everybody goes, oh, Walter, it must be terrible to have to do jury duty. I go, oh, yes, it's so terrible. I, well, you were talking about so. binging old TV shows. Uh, you know what I've been binging lately is Hot in Cleveland. Isn't that a great show? It's Isn't a Betty great White show. A great She's show. I, I missed it completely the first time around. You know, you know what else is amazing is uh, on the same uh, same YouTube menu mm-hmm. are um, the original What's My Lines. Yeah. And you see a very different world from 1950, 51, right. 52 of people who are on What's My Line and how that show was hosted. And uh, John Daly treated each of those panelists as though they were the king of England. Uh, they were deferred to, respected, and, um, you know, to have Bennett Cerf sitting there. Bennett's, people don't realize who Bennett Cerf was. He wasn't like running uh, Random House. He was the founder of Random House. Yeah. Random House was his idea. And then he took three hours off a week to go on this TV show, which, by the way, do you know where that was shot? Where? It was shot on the upper floor, the mezzanine floor at Grand Central Station. That's where they yes, shot Yes, that that's where show. the CBS studios were originally. Right. How cool is that? Yeah. Uh, you, you don't get the feeling they're on the mezzanine floor. It's not like they used... The view from the mezzanine is a background or anything. Today they would, by the way. Today they would. They must have then felt that it was a that shame. they were ashamed to yeah. not have a proper studio. Yeah. That that NBC was at Thirty Rock with real studios. It must have been embarrassed. Well, they people don't realize originally the major studios that they used for NBC were in Brooklyn. Right. Yeah. You know. Right. And, and to this day, a lot of Brooklyn. some of the if some of the soaps are still done right. there. You know, Brooklyn. TV studio in Brooklyn, right? You know. But um, uh, so uh, you know, I mean, we, we went from Don Sherwood to being talking about life experiences. But as I was saying, I find that I don't have as much to talk about because before I could kind of talk about the adventures of Alex Bennett, right? right. And oh, today I went to here and I this happened and I went to the dentist and and there's not that much that I that I have to talk about lately. Or maybe it's just... But you old... go outside now, right? You go outside. No, now. I don't. Really? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I'm about ready to venture out there again because we've given the all clear signal uh, that things are not very bad here in New York. But, you know, as somebody who's 82 years old, you know, this whole COVID thing scared the shit out of me. You know? You were right to be scared and you were right to stay inside and you were right to take care of yourself because that's why you're here. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, your governor wasn't going to take care of you, and uh, it was handled poorly on all fronts. But as I say to anybody who will listen to me, I say, none of these people in charge wanted yeah. anyone to die. Yeah. None of them had an exper- any experience with a pandemic. They did right. their best. Right. You know, nobody wanted anyone to die. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, so I'm, I'm kind of, I've been indoors a lot. And I probably should go back out. It's winter now, though, and it's cold, so Horrible. my walks are not appropriate. You know. So, what uh, series have you been binging? Do you remember? Well, the, any hot, other ones? hot in Cleveland. That's about it. I mean, come on, there's six seasons of that. 156 that's right. episodes. That's right. The other, you know, and I love that Storage Wars. I love that Storage. Really? There's no I, show. Well, I love Below Deck Mediterranean. Brilliant. The way I explain it to friends, I say, you have to understand what it is. This is a show about Australian high school dropouts wearing uniforms that are too tight, who don't know where to put the fork on a place setting. And that's a whole hour. Yeah, that, right, and, uh, right, right. That's a whole hour. But, and but, then, but, but, but the Mediterranean one, I just like best because the women are kind of more attractive. and It's just the whole thing. But what it is. Well, you is, know why they're more attractive, don't you? There's Why? a reason. Why? The captain is a lesbian. And she 
<laughs> she's very picky about who shares her bunk. So now she has a crew, a crew of Australian. How do you know she's I, a lesbian? Has it been stated she's a lesbian? Yeah, I think they actually showed the wedding. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So she's a lesbian, or as I would say in the air, a known lesbian. A known lesbian. A known lesbian. <laughs> but the kids are high school dropouts from Australia, so they've got those great accents that are automatically sexy, and they don't know anything. So you can tell them anything, and they'll think it's a good idea, bad idea, I'll have another drink. It's a great show. And then I found out what it takes to make that show. They have 400 people in the production staff to make that show that's how many hotel rooms they have to have to get and one of the one of the um, one of the state rooms on those yachts is, is the control room control room yeah that's yeah. what i've heard uh, so they have a control room on that boat and uh, it's brilliant and it must cost for a bravo a well they, they probably have to rent out the boat don't they or how about the people who rent we're going to go over folks this is going to be a longer than usual interview because i love the or conversation the people on the boat do they pay half of what they would normally pay i see okay all right and they agree to be on on camera they're thrilled yeah yeah uh but uh and so the company pays for the rest of the boat so that got it's got to be an expensive proposition how much does that boat go for a, a week or something uh, depending on what i've read it's 350 or four hundred thousand dollars oh jesus so that's not a cheap show to produce. That's not like your normal no. reality show where, you know, they go into a home owned by a housewife of Cincinnati or something and, you know. Not to mention the fact that it, it, the, think about the show. You don't see I don't see any product placement in that show. So the only way they can offset that course cost is with uh, people online subscribing or ads. Yeah. Uh, I, it, for some reason, I, everybody, a lot of people who I know, my friend Shecky, for, for instance, uh, they all watch Below Deck Mediterranean or it's Below brilliant. Deck whatever. You know, they have several Below Decks. I like the Mediterranean right. one best. Yeah, me uh, too. They have Below Deck Mediterranean, Below Deck Sailing Yacht, and uh, <clears throat> I don't remember the other one. Yeah. Perhaps there will be, become a whole Below Deck network. It's kind of like MSNBC on weekends has become the Shark Tank network. It's like Shark Tank all weekend long. Good decision. Yeah. Another kind of show I, I always watch. They, those guys, yes, brilliant show. Those guys get paid $35,000 an episode, each of the sharks. Mm -hmm. They don't need the money. Um, but they each get paid $35,000 and... As uh, Robert Herjavec says, you have to understand, Mark Cuban can uh, buy and sell all of us 10 times over. Yeah. You know, he's just crazy rich. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but it, uh, that's a great show because, uh, again, I call it what I call it is a potato chip show. You just start eating it and eating it and eating it. And you got to eat some more. You got to eat some more. And, and yet it takes no work to eat them. You know, right. and no investment right. You just lie there and let it waft over you, and then it's on to somebody else with some stupid thing he's trying to sell. And, you know, you listen to them and you go, I wouldn't buy that. And then they argue over it. It just, it's it's a perfect show for vegging. You know? Yeah, and you can stop and start oh, it really? at any time. Oh, really? Really? There's another robo call. But the other thing about it is, that, and my kids and I have figured this out. Each shark has a type of person that they are inclined to give money to. Mm -hmm. So Mark Cuban really likes 22-year-old fierce young men who mm -hmm. go door to door to sell their idea. He loves that. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Barbara Corcoran likes uh, entrepreneurs who have given up everything, lost everything, mm -hmm. and have no place else to go. She loves that. Right. And Robert Herjavec has a sus suspicious tendency toward women of a certain age who are very attractive. Yeah. He likes that. Um, so they each have a tendency. Wow. Well, listen, we're running out of time here. Uh, Thank you, uh, Alex. And I just, I love talking with you, you know. Uh, it's, uh, it's always a, a great pleasure. It's a great pleasure for me. I want to tell your viewer one thing, mm -hmm. which is that 
when you were on the radio in New York mm-hmm. during the Kent State protests yeah, you and always the Kent talk State about shootings, yeah. your fierce, honest anger on the air all night on WMCA mm-hmm. during that period mm-hmm. was breathtaking. It was setting the bar in ways that had never been set before. It was establishing authenticity from a host we had never heard before. And uh, people like Howard Stern have often commented on those shows. He heard those shows, too. It was remarkable radio, and I will forever be grateful to you for being able to hear that. And can I say that when I was doing them, I didn't realize I was doing anything. I was just being me. You were channeling what you needed to channel. Hey, stay where you are when we're through here. I want to talk to you for a second. And uh, that's Walter Sable, ladies and gentlemen. He knows Walter Sterling. He can be heard across the country on Sunday nights. Uh, I know starting here in New York, about 10 o'clock, something like that. 10 to 1 Eastern. Right. And you should listen to him. He's a, And he's also kind of part of the history of radio, I hate to say. Anyway, I don't want to make you that old. Uh, anyway, thanks, uh, Walter. Appreciate Thank you. it. Bye-bye. Thanks. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. I can't get things to ever run right. <laughs> oh, God. Hold on a second. Everything is, is goes wrong here. Hello. Welcome back. How are you? Uh, there's only one person waiting to come on the show. And uh, everybody had a good uh, a period of time here to get it done. So we'll go to the one person that's there, okay, and, uh, and uh, uh, talk with him. And if we don't hear from somebody soon, well, we'll just call it quits, okay? So anyway, let me bring him on here. Uh, oh, and here comes Kevin. Oh, here comes Kevin. Okay, let's admit Kevin. There we go. And... Uh, uh, there they are, ladies and gentlemen. There's Alan and Kevin. Hello, Alan. Hello, Kevin. You're very blurry, Kevin. No, well, he's he it, always when he when Kevin's c- camera starts, it has like those little lines in it. Yes. And then yeah. it go, they go away. They go away after a while. Do you, you, do you notice it too, right, Kevin? Yeah. Never been able to figure out what does it, right? No. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. <clears throat> I told you every night I that my lights flickered in this apartment. Right. At about ten o'clock. That's better. Yeah. For, the on, lines are gone. You're clean. I it with a hammer. Yeah. But on the button, on the button, it used to it used to go at uh, at at ten o'clock. My lights started to flicker, and they do it for about f- three minutes, and then they stop flickering. And I thought it was something. I don't know. Maybe over the con ed where they were changing the service or what i don't know what they were doing and all of a sudden i find i figured it out one night it's coffee my maker. coffee maker yeah it's my curry it draws cold. a lot of power huh do they draw a lot of power yeah a high amperage yes wow. wow you plug your toaster and your coffee maker on the same circuit and use them at the same time you'll probably get a blown fuse oh no we did uh let's see here i did uh, the uh uh, yeah, the uh, the microwave and the oh. coffee maker same time goodbye that's all she wrote all right yeah you know I feel living in this apartment is like camping out you know oh. it's just like one adventure after another I'm, I I even had a squirrel in here once so you know mm-hmm. it's when I first moved in there was a squirrel I'm sitting there in the kitchen and I'm having something to eat I look over to the side of my eye there's a fucking squirrel standing there and I wonder how he got in well that, they got in through that, the window which was open oh okay then then the, the squirrel saw Phil on the show and jumped to its death yeah right no but the squirrel the squirrel this is strange I had seen something out of the corner of my eye occasionally in the apartment and I I, I went and I I'm not seeing anything and finally I look over and there's this squirrel and he's in the in the dining room and so I immediately start clapping my hand and say get out of here and for a while he's kind of looking at me like you really think I'm going anywhere 
I think I raised the teeth too. Yeah, you, you you think I'm going anywhere? And I went, yeah, you better go, or I'm gonna fucking kill you. And at that, he took off and went uh, out the window. Um, now, uh, you know, I wondered how he got up there, but I hear they can climb up the side of buildings. You know, they're very very adroit. <laughs> yeah, and, I always see them in the tree by my house. They there's always they're going running up and down, up and down. Yeah, but trees and you can are see them always creating stuff. These trees are where they normally live. Not I know, but they, it's like they build their little nest. I know. It's like you see them going up and down. Not, not in a five-room apartment. That is true, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. what happened was, though, a couple of days later, there's a news item on the news. Uh, this is a story from CVS, and they had a reporter down there. A squirrel went r was running rampant in the CVS, yeah. and the CVS only a block from us. So I figure after he got through with us, he went down to the CVS. <laughs> he shoplifted. They didn't even get arrested. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah, but he went to the CVS, and they finally they caught him there. So, you know, he was he was he was playing it really loosey goosey that squirrel. But so, do you guys in New York have Seattle's best coffee? No. Oh, that was good coffee. He sent me. I have to say, I, Alex. Sent, I sent him some. Oh, thank you. I really he, he appreciate Alex? that. I really, you know, right what, you know what coffee, it, was last, it was last week, Alex. It was good. You do know what coffee does to him, don't you, Alex? I, I like when he's wired. I'm making tea right now. <laughs> I still got tea bags, so. Well, actually, the best coffee out of Seattle is Pete's. I yeah. bought that, Alex, when I went out there. You, When you said that, I found Pete's coffee. Yeah. I found it. Yeah. I don't know. Can Which people? We, I don't think you can get Pete's in New York City. Really? Yeah, you have to. You can well, order it. You can order it through Amazon. Yeah, you can get it through Amazon. I'm on you Amazon want me now. To ship you some, Alex? What? You want me to ship you some? No. 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 I have some. Thank you. Thank you. you and Tony can be wired together. I have. To, I have some. I have some, I have some still. I read all night and I drink it. They say Starbucks was Pete's over roasted. That's what Alex said. They were together in business, right? Remember you saying that. They were, they were both in business together. Yeah, I found that fascinating they started, the, yes, before they broke apart. They started Starbucks, I believe. And then they, yeah, you said they that. separated, and the yeah. other guy went off and started Pete's. I like Pete's over Starbucks. Oh, they, absolutely. I didn't, yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that Pete's was. I don't like Starbucks. Wait a minute. Hold on a second, Tony. Let me hear what he has. Oh, yeah. Say. I'm sorry. I'm going to make it. Yeah, be right back. Oh, you I, see, that's your coffee talk in there. Yeah. I didn't know that Pete's was a spinoff from Starbucks. Oh, yeah. It, it's not that it's a spinoff. It's just the two partners didn't get along, and one went one way, and one went the other way. And they both had successful coffee companies. Although, oh, yeah, definitely. Although Pete's is not as well known around the entire country because they didn't expand this far. It's big on the West Coast. But it's very big on the West Coast and considered preferable to Starbucks. I think so. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, Starbucks, I think, was not so much that their coffee was good. But that you could go in and you could sit there and nurse a coffee for five hours and and run your laptop and use it as an office, you know. And they never chased you out. They never said get out of here. There's a you know a twenty minute limit or anything like that. So that's why you never could find a seat inside a Starbucks. But uh, so anyway, uh, we lost Tony. He's off. Probably, he went to get his caffeine. He's probably went off to get more coffee. No, he's I'm, said ma I'm making a cup of tea because I still I have so many tea bags from my mother, so I'm, I figured I'll use one tonight. Because she used to drink tea, and I used to do the coffee. Sometimes we trade it up. Just I still talk go about get like, your goddamn like, tea, oh, yeah. will you? It's been about twenty minutes doing it. It would be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think there's an alarm out on the street. Why don't you go see what it is? <laughs> Oh boy, he's going to talk to us from the from the kitchen or wherever he's. I can never tell. Is this his his dining room here, or is this uh, a uh, what is this room with this ugly, horrible wallpaper? It's like the dining room off off the kitchen. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's, it's dining room wallpaper, isn't it? What's that? Is that the dining room you're in? Yeah, this is my mother's dining room, yeah. Wait a minute, uh, you're, you're, it's not your mother's dining room any longer. I, mean, I still think like she's here, your like mother, you said. Like, I, I gotta... I'm going to, this is going to be a shock to you, but your mother is dead. 
<laughs> Thank God, I'm joking. No, the other day my brother's like, you miss mommy? Because it was like a year. I said, I miss her. You know what I do miss? I'll never forget this. When she used to call me, Anthony, Anthony, I says, what? I used to get up, what's the matter? One o'clock in the morning, could I have a lifesaver? And she would laugh. You call me up at one, because I was sleeping in the other room. I thought something happened. She fell out of bed. What's the matter, Ma? I need a lifesaver. My mouth is dry. How did she sleep with a lifesaver? I used to give it to her. She said, Ma, you're going to choke. I won't choke. I, I promise. I can't even promise. She used to roll on her side. Thank, thank, <laughs> thank, thank, thanks a lot, Alan. Right. I know. Thanks. I didn't the Seattle would have thought Trump would have killed him. That was last week. Thanks, Alan. We really appreciate it, Alan. No problem. Yeah. I'm here to please. Too, too bad he too bad he never got into cocaine and you couldn't supply him with that. You know. <laughs> I don't see much difference. Yeah. For him? For him? Oh. It's, yeah. it's not done yet. I got the electric pot going. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh I'll be up till three. <laughs> my head is going. Uh, I don't. You know what I told Jackie? Alex, you should have took Alex's advice. He says, what? Never invite him over. <laughs> Hello, Ray. Hello. How's it going? Uh, Tony's on coffee you? again. Oh, geez. I'm working, yeah. On, yeah, I'm working on tea. I had coffee before, so. Yeah, you get you get high on tea, too. <laughs> you yeah. found my vice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm going to say something, uh, uh, Tony, because every now and then you send Shecky a, 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 what do you call it, a, a text. And yeah. if it's if he considers it especially weird, he sends Which it to me. Oh. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the pajamas? Yes. Alex, I saw a nice Superman pajamas. He didn't well, want hold, on a hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. He goes, this is ridiculous. It does Can I sound. just have a show of hands? How many of you guys here wear pajamas? I have. I always Hold have on a second, it. Tony. Oh, go ahead. How many of you guys here wear pajamas? Did I just make my point? You don't wear pajamas, Alex? No. You wear a light thing, I thought. No. Really? No. I got all different ones. No, in fact, I wear these things. Well, I, can't, I don't know if I can show them. I, I have those on right now, flannels. Yeah, flannels. But, but I, when I go to sleep at like night, marble, when I go to me. sleep at night, I take them off. Yeah. None I of us wear. Guys. None of us wear pajamas. Apparently, you do. Yeah, I got feeties too. Yeah, I got a. I got a ton of pajamas. I call. You know what I call them? Loungewear. My brother came home. I'm walking around with lounge wear. Marble top I lounger. See. She says, "What the hell are you wearing?" He goes, "Yeah, my marble comics." He says, "Did you get dressed?" You know what I do? I drop my boxes off and then by, I come home. By the way, look at look at what you would do. I don't even want to leave the house anymore. Hey, can, um, can no I just can I just do something, me. Alan? No more coffee. Look at me, Alan. Look at me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was last week that he drank it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and it's still affecting him. <laughs> yes. No, but he's, are he's, an Italian. He, he sends Shecky a thing saying, I'm going to bring you over some pajamas. Now, I haven't asked Shecky, but I don't think he wears pajamas. I got my brother Spider-Man pajamas. He wouldn't wear them, no, so I took him back. <laughs> Here comes Phil Meyer. Boy, oh, no. you know something? I, I never thought the... I'd be so relieved to see Phil Meyer. Hey, oh, Phil, oh, we're God. in the same room. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. Uh, I owe this background to Ray. To uh, Ray? Yeah. What should we call it? What yeah. should I, I, I was, got to eat no milk. No, really. I, I was listening to your uh, wonderful uh, interview with Walter Sabo, mm -hmm. and then I heard that you didn't have uh, too many people calling in, and then I had to reboot my computer, and now I came, and you got plenty of people. Yeah, no, but it's fine. It's fine. We're glad to have you here. It's, All right. It's nice to have you join our little group. Your uh, soiree. My, my soiree. As Actually, it were. there's some higher octane coffee that uh, oh, no. No, Phil, no. Phil drinks. And... Uh, what's, is that the one that you were talking about, Black Death or something? No. no. Murder yeah. Out. Uh, oh, like, oh, black oh, Rifle oh, Coffee. Well, I, I did Black Death or de Death. What was it called? Death, yeah, death Wish or something. Death yeah, Wish I, Coffee. Uh, yeah. That's not as strong as uh, Murder Out. Uh, uh, by Black Rifle Coffee. And uh, Black funny. Rifle is a company That's... that hires veterans. Uh, is, is, there, is there a limit to how strong they can make coffee? 
Anybody know? See, I don't like strong. Uh, I didn't no, ask no, you, Tony. Europe. Oh, sorry. <laughs> in Europe, uh, you know, you get the espresso and uh, the Cuban coffee that you get in Miami. That's the Mark Cuban uh, coffee, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I like the Cuban coffee. You know, it's it's a little bit in a cup. Mm-hmm. And then the French have demi tasse, which is a little cup. Mm-hmm. And uh, Thank you. My understanding is the darker they roast coffee, the less caffeine. You know, it's not a bad cup of coffee. My brother took me to McDonald's when I came back from the doctor. McDonald's coffee, Alex, is pretty good. Yeah, it's considered pretty good. Uh, you know what's considered really good? Which one? The Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, ever since they don't let me sit in there anymore, I refuse to buy coffee in there. They won't let you sit in the place. Listen, I won't, you should I not be allowed. You should not they be allowed. They won't alo- let you sit in the place. You would not. Me. You should not be allowed to buy coffee anywhere. You're right. Evan, you said that. I told that to check. He's got me pegged. I didn't even realize my little my little things that you picked up on that I never noticed. <laughs> well, he sends me occasionally one like that one he wrote sent to me, and he. Well, the said, coffee. You were right, Alex. I never knew I was like so jacked up. He said you're time. never going to believe the the. the <laughs> oh yeah, I'll buy you the pajamas. I'll leave by the house room. What's this your is, size, Alex? Phil, this is why I don't send Tony any higher octane coffee. It'll knock him out. You, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you should. Yeah, you should send it to him. It, it's actually the smoothest, the smoothest coffee I've had in yeah. a long time. What? Uh, it, What's that? It's strong. It's smooth. What? Kind of like the way I love my women. You know. <laughs> Oh, What's the name of the coffee? I'm afraid to ask. It's <laughs> called Black Rifle Coffee, yeah, it's, and it's, it's the, right. the it's style that I like, and I don't like any of the others, is called Murder Out, or M.O. Is this a real coffee? Yeah, he, likes yeah. His, he likes his coffee like he likes his women. Yeah, Bl- real black deal. and bitter. <laughs> Brown wow. sugar. Peach so why do you drink coffee at night? Don't you want to sleep? Who me? Yeah. What am I? I doing? read till like three in the morning. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm a night owl actually. Oh, okay. yeah. I need to. So have I, yeah, to wake I can get up early though. Still, right? I can get up at seven. Still, wow. I don't sleep till. I, I can go to sleep about two, and get up at seven. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I used to stay up late. You don't need to sleep much, I guess. <laughs> you know what it is? I can cat nap here and there. You know. I, oh, yeah, okay. I five hours. I'm pretty good. Oh, no, Alex is falling asleep. Yeah. No, I'm not falling asleep. I'm getting <laughs> woozy. Painful. <laughs> and I'm drinking coffee. This it's is, painful. That's what it is. This is Wolfgang Puck's coffee I'm drinking at night. Yeah, give an alcoholic beer. Yeah. Out of your Keurig, right, Alex? Yeah. Right out of my Keurig. Yeah. I do hey, it in the, in the yeah. Is is Wolfgang looking for his coffee now if you're drinking his coffee? Okay. Uh, well, we'll forget you said that one. <laughs> hey Phil, looks like your right arm is amputated. Uh, oh yeah, it looks like he's oh, there. It is. Oh okay. It's, it's the chair. Oh okay. okay. It's his voting it's arm. Those, uh, <laughs> body. But are you uh, using no. a green screen there? What green screen? Are you using a green screen? I feel like he's yeah. in my house. Or are you just using the Zoom? Um, no, I'm I'm using the green screen. Yeah. Hey Phil, do you you've been working out? You look you look like you're in shape. Yeah, I I actually uh, have been. I didn't feel good this morning, and I didn't oh. go to the gym. But uh, I've been going three days a week, and I'm doing CrossFit. Oh, good. And uh, not that I've lost much weight, but I've gained a lot of muscle. Yeah. And uh, my waist has gotten thinner. I feel, I know. you know, from working out. I didn't yeah. feel great this morning. I felt like I had COVID. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, they said, I was reading an article, they said Bob Saget had COVID. How would they, they were saying that when he no, died? It was months before he no, hit, before. No, hit his head. No, 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 no. They, they, when they did the autopsy, they found he had COVID. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Because yeah. I thought that he had had COVID earlier, uh, you know, months before. Yeah. Maybe, no, they they, well, they, maybe that's what happened. No, that's not what happened. What happened uh, was, was head trauma. Was head trauma. They don't know really? how he got a blow to his head. Uh, they think he may have just gotten out of a car and hit his head against something, you know. And then he, do went, it. then he went up and went to sleep, and he, I guess uh, he got a brain hemorrhage and died. Yeah. You know. That how Sonny Bono bought it uh, when he was skiing. He hit his head. and uh, On a tree, yeah. On yeah. a tree. Same, same thing with Liam Neeson's wife. Why? Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she had head trauma and uh, then died. Yeah, it, it's very common, you know, yeah, and, yeah. And, and it can happen to you, and you don't even know you've got it. 
you know. I've had I've had a couple concussions and they make you go right away and get a scan even if you feel okay because you won't even know you're bleeding on your brain. Yeah, and you, you'll die in like a half an hour. Was that when you were boxing? Yeah. Yeah, and then, and then I and then I got assaulted and I got in a car accident. You know, they couldn't pay me to uh, enough to to box. I don't care actually, what they want. Actually, actually it wasn't a, it feel? wasn't a blow. I fell down and hit the back of my head. I didn't get knocked Ooh. over or anything. I just yeah. like fell. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, the, the front of the guy's fist hit the front of your head. No, then... <laughs> that's not happened. I fell. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a it's a freakish thing. It's just an absolutely yeah. freakish yeah. thing. You know, uh, Ray and I have gone to those MMA matches, and there is no way that I would ever get in the ring like that. Me either. I, uh, even if I was young, and uh, I, I can't believe those people. They, they're probably not going to be able to speak uh, in 20 years. Oh. Hey, Phil, you know, one of the, I think the second one went to, I knew, I was friends with one of the guys in there. Yeah. He, he's like one of, he was like my boxing coach. I couldn't believe it. And he got his butt kicked. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Bill Hicks, yeah. the great Bill Hicks had a bit he did once where he said that he believed that it would be a good idea if the World Wrestling Federation uh, were to like hire old ladies like in their 80s <laughs> to box mm. to the death with one of their wrestlers who would then kick the crap out of them and kill them. Uh, and and he said, how would you rather your old granny die? You know, in some kind of little hospital room somewhere with her skin so thin you can see the blood coursing through her veins uh -huh. and the slowly dying a long, anguishing death, or have the crap beat out of her by uh, a major wrestler, you know? Oh, that's only for ex-wives. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said that that he always said that would be the best best way to get in the cage. Huh? Would she have any say in it though? Or oh yes, oh, just... absolutely. You know. Oh okay. But, but she could you know, pay her a lot of money to do it, and then she get the crap beaten out of her by uh, I don't know who who's a famous wrestler, uh, uh, The Rock, Hulk Hogan. You know, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Hulk Hogan. Yeah. yeah. He's like he's like seventy, I think. And they, you know, they do that in the streets in New York. You know, the random old ladies, mainly Chinese, get mm -hmm. slapped down and, and beaten and pushed into traffic. Uh, that's a sport in New York, isn't it? The sport? Yeah, uh, pushing people into the subway. Yeah. 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 That's sick. Uh, well, you know, I, I you had a good idea, didn't you? Yeah, to make a mess all over. Yeah, I, I was... I was going to sell bungee cords on bungee GabNet cords. Yeah. where you could tie the bungee cords bungee. around the post. Bungee cords? Bungee. 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 He's a moron. Bungee. Okay. bungee. bungee. Yeah, well, hey, it was my idea. So you take, <laughs> the, you take the bungee cords, you put them around the post, and you hook, your, hook the bungee cords in front of you, and then if somebody pushes you, you're not going to fall off. Yeah, and but maybe he pushes you so hard that you fly out and then slam back into the post and kill yourself. Well, if you hit your head. Yeah, yeah. But it might have happened a few hours later. I see. Yeah. Uh, good. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, you know, they, they, it, was, we, it was a crazy guy, wasn't it? Some, some old crazy guy who had been in many mental hospitals and whatever, and he was in the subway, and some woman was standing there, and he pushed her right in front of a train. It was Tony after a pot of coffee. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, well, My train's here. Watch out. <laughs> Move out of the way. <laughs> By the way, you got my order wrong last week. <laughs> you know, Tony is like this all day long. He leaves me 40, 50 messages that are about 30, 40 seconds apiece, and they're audio messages. Oh, yeah, I do the audio for you sometimes. I call them Hollywood. Alex made you a star, I said. <laughs> no, to send me those. Tonight? Oh, you're, you're <laughs> lucky, Ray. Yeah, he stopped. I guess I, I didn't I respond. Don't, I don't even listen to the audio messages. <laughs> Well, I'm worried I'll, about I'll go get my phone and I'll play one for oh, you. I don't want to hear my voice on that. <laughs> yeah. no, no, you, you, you know, you should hear what you sound like. Tony yeah, doesn't even imagine it. Tony doesn't even dare leave me, leave me messages. On no, my I, no, I did, Alex. I left you a message today. Did you? Yeah, I said I was going to call it. I was telling you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get it. You know why? Because I've blocked your messages. <laughs> 
He was smart. I told Shecky, he's smart. You got to listen to him. He laughs. Uh, okay. You see, he's always thinking. It's Phil, you got to do what he does. Block of, me. You kind of like Beetlejuice. If we say your name three times, here you are. I know. Yeah. I come. Last night, I didn't listen because I was kind of reading. But usually, I do listen to you guys. Yeah. What do you read? I'm reading. Uh, I'm reading two picture. books. Actually. I'm reading a Thomas Wolfe book, and I'm reading the book on the uh, the birth of the uh, CBS Morning Show with uh, the NFL. You, you are looking live. Mm-hmm. Brett Musburger, Irv Cross, Jimmy the Greek. All right. Jimmy yeah, so it's pretty good so far. Yeah, the uh, Brett Musburger book in them. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm kind of like sorry about that. <laughs> and I got a book on Jack Rollins, Alex. I was talking to Chucky about him, so I didn't start that yet. So I, I was excited about that. Yeah. You read any books by Whoopi Goldberg? Please, no, I don't. Is she funny, Alex? I can't take her. My mother liked her on The View. I never got her. Is she a comedian or? You know, you, what, you know what happens with with Tony. The worst part about Tony is he asks a question and then he answers it. I did answer it, or no? Did I? You did. You <laughs> asked it. Yeah, I didn't even realize that, Alex. Alex is right. You do it a lot. I'm sorry. All right. Is she, okay. Are you? I, mean, I don't get her. If you don't answer his question fast enough, he... That's what it is. You You don't have have time to answer his question. Sorry. I I do that all the time. You just did it. You said, is she funny? I don't get her. You just did it. I didn't even realize that. All right. I'll I'll throw it to the crowd. I don't care. But to begin with, she was was funny. She wasn't a comedian, basically. So she wasn't then? She was a... She would basically did theater. She basically oh. did yeah. uh, one person theater. One person shows. And Over at Julia Morgan, I lived around the corner from yeah. her in Berkeley, and she used to do the shows there, her yeah. shows. And they were like one woman shows, yeah. right? They weren't yeah. really stand up comedy acts. No, they were one woman. Well, plays. you know you know the difference between oh, really? you know what yeah. the, the the difference between a one person show is and a comedy act, don't you? No. New no, no comedian. Twenty nine ninety five. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Really? Would it, like, would some one woman show? She would go there and like tell a story or something. Or? Tell stories, yeah. Yeah, she yeah. might oh, like okay. the little yeah. one. And she was very place. good, and she was very good at it. And then also, oh, okay, so maybe I would enjoy. She, it. I, I, I saw her a couple Ray, times. She was good. And, Ray, did yeah. you ever do something like the vin- vagina monologues? I know you did love. I letters. did. Yeah, love. I don't know how how you were able to do it without crying. You know, but yeah, I did the penis monologue. I do that every night, pretty much. Oh, you, that's called begging. <laughs> no, he, he talks to his dick. <laughs> Twenty that's minutes of begging. Come mm-hmm. on, baby. I shake you. You're supposed to stand up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he did a he did a play called Love Letters. Yeah, and Alex that's doesn't cool. think it's a play, but he, and Alex is right. You read it. Well, yeah, you read it. What it is? It's a it's a lazy kind of theater in that they can get any two people. Like, oh, we, no. did, we just got. Uh, um, I agree. Whoopi Goldberg and uh, Regis Philbin. Oh, and they're going to read you know, love letters now. You know, we rehearsed a lot, we, though. The really way did. the way he has to read it, he can't cry. And uh, you know, some of it is very you know uh, uh, you know pulls at your heartstrings. And, uh, well, we rehearsed. A ton, we did a ton of rehearsal, and I almost had it memorized. But I did do a play that's usually read, and we memorized it. It was called The Guys. And it was about nine eleven. Yeah. Very sad. I we memorized the whole thing. It was a hundred pages long. So, oh. and there's just two. Ray, how, how do you memorize that? You just would keep reading it. How does that work? You, you well, you know it. you're going to have an audience uh, on a certain day, and it gives you a big incentive. Oh, really? uh, you, uh, there's different ways. You know, you do like um, connection between words, and then also when you do the blocking, walking it on stage, it helps you remember like. Or, or when I'm facing this way, or when I'm saying this to her, remember, you remember something else. Or you can picture things. Well, when in your I mind. was when I was doing theater, mm-hmm. uh, I uh, we were doing arsenic and old lace at the Marin County uh, oh, Marin okay. Community Center yeah. Theater, yeah. The, you know. And um, I uh, came on and I was playing uh, the part that Boris Karloff played on Broadway, uh, uh, Jonathan. And uh, I would I would come on every night and I would do do it and you know whatever, and I one night I went on, and I did my part, and then somehow I went up on my line, and went back to a line from the beginning of the play, and we went through the whole first act again, 
<laughs> Have you ever that had happens. that happen? Huh? That happens. It yeah. hasn't happened to me, but it happens. Because you get keyed by something, and all of a sudden you go back and you're saying a line that's in the beginning. Oh my and you, then all of a sudden, everybody has to kind of go along with it. And like, I think we had the longest first act in history that night. <laughs> Sometimes I walk into a room and I can't remember why. He remembers a hundred pages. <laughs> it's different. It's different. Yeah. It's just repetition and using, you know, use sense memory, physical memory, uh, imagination, connecting words, whatever you have to do. I was do never it. good at memorizing, but yet when we did a play, I was able to. Yeah, because you know. it, it's different kind of memorization. Well, I mean... Because it, there's yeah. movement, there's intention, there's all these things. And if also, it's well you're, you're reading the play over and over and over again. Yeah. You're doing it over and over and over again, and yeah. eventually you just kind of get it. Is it yeah. like when you learn lyrics to a song? Kind of. Yeah, kind of, yeah. but here's, and, a, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I mean, I found when I was doing when I was doing uh, the log on TV and I was doing these stand up bits for you know on technology and so on. Uh, I uh, I just I, I I first was intimidated by having to memorize, and then I suddenly realized don't be intimidated by memorization. Right. Just let it waft over you. So I would read it a couple of times and then I'd I'd kind of get it. I'd, I I'd say yeah. to myself. Well, what is this about? And yes, and and, oh. and and I I usually nailed it. That's it, the thing is like if you really think like what's the meaning? Why am I saying it? What's behind? And you you remember I like well, human beings. Uh, I would have to say, I would have to say that half the time uh, it was a shame when I didn't remember it because I was the guy that wrote it too. So, so you know. <laughs> What did I write? Anything? But also with TV, we were doing you know this shot and then this shot and then this shot, so you could. You know, you were doing like one s sentence at a time. You know, so. But also, different. like people can memorize a lot. They don't realize it in in the olden days. You know, in school, like I don't know, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen hundreds. Kid had kids had to memorize huge amounts of stuff, yeah. poems, long poems, and multiplication it, tables. Yeah. Oh, I hated can, that. I hated that. Yeah. But uh, you got to turn it into a song. Oh, look. Some people learn their lines by turning them into something. Oh, really? Alan's disappearing. Wait a yeah. minute. Move your That's head down. That's the only down. way he can head. lose weight. Move your head down all the way, Alan. <laughs> Move your head down all the way. There he goes. He's, He's disappearing. Yeah, the disappearing Alan act. I'm, I'm actually on uh, on MBDB. IMDB. Oh, yeah, I can't even see it. Okay. I'm looking up Ray's uh, acting career. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I only ha I only have a, like a half dozen things on there. Isn't that because I, I mostly do theater? Yeah. yeah. I saw Ruben's place. You did? Yeah. Sounds like a dude. How in the hell did you see that? Uh, wow, that's something. actually a pretty good movie. I had a good part in that. That that wasn't you, the the young boy in it. No, no, no. I was his uncle. Right, right. That was a good movie. I just don't remember much about it. Yeah. It was a good movie. Hmm. Yeah, it was a long time ago then. Hmm. Yeah, 2005 is what it says here. Let's see here. I looked up Alex Ben on IMDb, and I used to have a, quite a few things there, but no more. Oops. Did, did you I'll see that uh, Dave Portnoy thing I sent you? He was talking about a different Alex Bennett. But yeah, yeah, I thought that was actually him for a rant. That was, uh -huh. funny. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. What, what was this? Are you I, familiar I, with uh, Ray? You were familiar with Dave Portnoy, the uh, oh. uh, barstool uh, barstool sports and the pizza reviews. No. Oh. Uh, Who's uh, that? Uh, Ray, uh, Dave Portnoy. He's uh, uh, he owns Barstool Sports. It's okay. a, a, a national thing where uh, I guess they have something to do with football games and uh, oh. Portnoy. And uh, so he's been traveling around the country, going to different pizza parlors and rating them on video. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he's uh, he's going through a lawsuit right now. And he was complaining about two people that used to work for him. And one of them, I believe it was her name, was Alex Bennett. And uh, he yeah. was ranting and screaming, uh, and I sent it to Alex. I don't know that he opened it. He uh, sent it to me. Find it was there was some woman named Alex Bennett, that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, did you look it up? It's a common yeah. woman's name. Yeah, yeah, it is actually. <clears throat> hey, Alex, there's a there's a an episode of uh, Howard Stern on demand. And it's entitled Howard versus Alex Bennett. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I used to get to have quite a few more mentions than I don't. I don't even get them anymore. You know. Where, where we, are you? Are you talking, under Alex? Huh? We were talking to Sabo earlier, and Sabo. Sabo. Okay. Mm. That's West Coast people, you know. So, mm -hmm. but uh, you mentioned Don Sherwin. That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Mm -hmm. Very oh, yeah. good. Yeah, was on KGO, KSFO. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I believe that I, when I first moved to San Francisco in early '74, I had heard Don Sherwood, and I heard him doing pitches for um, uh, products too. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Alex says he never was a pitch man, but uh, no, I didn't say he wasn't a pitch man. Oh, I mean, okay. every, but, listen, everybody's a pitch man if we get paid enough. Yeah, yeah. all uh, those radio hosts do pitches once in a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would do pitches. Yeah, you know, but I mean, I would only do them if I believed in the product. I, you know, I had to believe in the product. Hello to to Brian. Let's say hello to Brian. Hello, hello, Brian. hello, hello. Brian. Huh? Uh, no, you, still you, doing on tonight. You came on a right. you came on a, a, a good night, by the way, Brian. Because uh, uh, um, Tony's all jacked up on coffee. Look at him; he can't keep still. Thanks, I Alan. Moved, uh, I moved the I, I got to get my phone so you can hear the Tony. Okay, let's talk about Bill. Voice. I don't want to hear my. How's he on the get for Alex? I thought we we're only got, had to be with him one night a week. Only one night a week, but he decided to come back again tonight. And who am I oh, to say? Oh, you're talking no? about Phil, not Tony. I thought we're not supposed to have Alan and Phil on the same time. Right. right. Oh, that's right. Well, really? Yeah. Well, they're brothers. Oh, they're cool. you know. yeah, very beautiful out today, like 80 degrees. Oh, it's warm nice. weather. How's it? How's it over there, Alex? Oh, it's um. By the way, he hasn't I've been got, outside. I've got a my watch. Yeah, it was is, eighty today. It's hmm? fifty nine now, but it was yeah. eighty. Really? Beautiful yeah. here in the Bay Area. I, better, I bet it was warm in Hollister. I better ch take my watch and, and charge it. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot, to, get, I forgot I got, to start charging my watch. There we go. No, it's uh, Tony's all jacked up on coffee tonight, and uh, that was our big problem, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I moved the tea though, the tea, if it makes sense. But it's still caffeine. See what do you think it's going to do? Neutralize the coffee? It's got World War Three on my stomach. By the way, it's it, there is a it's a it's an absolute fallacy to believe that coffee the tea doesn't have caffeine in it. it oh, does. I've gotten wired on tea. Oh really? yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. If I leave it steep too long, mm. oh man. Uh -huh. I got the tea bag in here still too. Yeah, well, tea bagging. Well, no, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, Tony. Knowing how you react to coffee, tea probably yeah, give you a buzz too. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't realize it, but I love my coffee. I do. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, I I think I might have got that from my mother really because she always used to <clears throat> make the coffee in the morning or something. So I was like, oh, that's yes. Yeah, uh, 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 Jeff had put his hand up. Did you have something you wish to say, Jeff? Yes, I, so I um, used to take a lot of coffee every day you know mm -hmm. and uh, then he had a stroke now, doctors say don't take coffee i usually drink really? water no, i don't take oh, it oh, wait. <sighs> do they do they say why do they say that because for the, you had a stroke right now if it's a stroke or the or the heart stuff did i, I, see, did I, did I see a bandage on your hand Oh, what happened? I thought I saw a bandage on your hand. Uh, a little higher. A little higher. A little higher. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh. What happened there? Well, part of this place is uh, not exactly refined in the way it's been built. <laughs> and so part of it just attacked my hand this morning. Uh, you're in Florida. What did you get? Bitten by an alligator? No, <laughs> just a lousy. Did you move to Florida? No, no, no. no. I'm oh. just, I'm just uh, a snowbird. Snow staying bird. away from the temperature in Connecticut. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Go for when it. are you nice coming? When are you, when are you coming back? Uh, the end of the month. Okay. We'll drive back. It stop snowing. 
<laughs> well, by the time, you know, we'll stop a couple of times to visit some people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And by the time we get there, unfortunately, it's going to be March, which is always a pretty lousy time anyway. Well, no, middle of March, though, gets very nice. Yeah, you know. I, I hope. I hope. The birds start <laughs> singing and, uh, you know, this time of the year, they're just out there coughing. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. <laughs> Uh, you you want to hear how you can stop Tony from calling and leaving messages? What? Oh, I can't hear my voice. I got to step away. You I have to upside. He said he died from getting a hit on the head. <laughs> what the fuck did that? They say no foul play. I wonder. Come on. I wonder. How do you die like that? That's strange. In a in a hotel in Florida. What the hell did he hit his head on? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, it wasn't like he was in the kitchen, um, like, you know, fixing a pipe or something that you can lift up your head and maybe hit something. That doesn't make any sense. They can say no foul play, but that that's odd. Um, See? That's a voice message? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here. Here's that's one of my... <laughs> I got a horrible voice. But you must be busy in the place firing people. I was reading last night, so I didn't get to listen to the show. I'll call Alex later. You're not going to call that, I know, because he's Hollywood now all of a sudden. He can't call more than once a week. God forbid. Right? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I think that's just because you made him a star, Alex. Now, was that your phone? Cool. Was that your phone? Yeah. yeah, that's actually from the iPhone, yeah. You can hit the thing on Facebook. <laughs> it's pretty clear. Oh, yeah, it really is. Very clear. Very clear. clear. Freely clear. (laughs) Brian, I I, I hate my voice. Alex, can I ask you a question? Would you shut up, Tony? (laughs) (laughs) This is actually important before I forget. Like, when you used to hear your voice on the radio, did you have a fringe or no? Take a break. Hey, Uh, (laughs) Tony, you don't have to talk. I can play your messages. (laughs) Tony, please. Hello, 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 Kevin. Hello, Brian. How are the two of you doing this fine evening? We got his background. We got his voice. I didn't ask you, Phil. Do you have to be the secondary Tony here? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm good at it. Kevin? We're doing good. We just got our building released to us today, so that's a huge accomplishment from having two two small buildings and we leveled them, mm-hmm. designed and built this huge factory. It's pretty exciting. So we we got our turnover today. So How long did it take you to build the factory? It was a year. Over a, uh, a year, we just demolished the two buildings, so it's probably a, month, a year and a month. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was fast. We, and and and, yeah. we, and and is all the stuff in already? All the all the uh, one in? one of our uh, three of our machines are in. Because we had to be cautious because the city didn't want us doing too much in there because it's still a construction site. So we still had to wear hard hats and everything. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, but we're, we're ready to go now. It's pretty exciting. Brian, how did it compare doing it in Lodi to doing it? Didn't you build another one in the Bay Area like in yeah, uh, Newark? Yeah, Newark. Newark. Yeah, Newark. Yeah, Newark was good, but uh, did it take longer? And was there more? Uh, the, the building was already the building was already there, so we we moved into a site that we it was already up. Those this are who, those who are design. here tonight from New York, which is Jeff and and Tony. There is a Newark yeah. in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, it's not Newark. Yeah, New it seems as though. In fact, there are a lot of towns named right. after East Newark, Coast Newark towns Jones. in the Bay Area. Because I think when people came out, they just missed the town they came from. So they named it Newark. There's, what else do we have? Uh, Pittsburgh. 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 Without the H. Yeah, it's spelled different. Pittsburgh. You know how they name carpet colors? They throw a bunch of lipstick names in, in a uh, in a, in a uh, hat or a bowl. Mm-hmm. They pick out the name and they pick the sample and they put it together. So it might be called Luscious uh, or... Uh, Sometimes they call it San Francisco. They, you know, they got all sorts of names. We so, were talking about cities, not about lipstick and rugs. Well, you know, I, <laughs> that's, uh, rugs are important. <laughs> How do you pick a, a carpet company's name? Uh, the ones that are still in business. <laughs> you uh, said that you picked 
A one, right? So they see. Oh no, I'm. Uh, I belong to a, a a buying group, but it's called Carpet One. Oh, but carpet I, people call up and they say, uh, "Well, what's the name of your company?" I, it's carpet One comes just before Carpet Two in the book, but it's going to be tough to say that because nobody has the yellow pages anymore. Yeah, yeah. Is it Carpet One the numeral? Uh, o N E. O N E. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's fancy. They spelled it out. Oh, okay, okay, because. Carpet three would come before carpet two. Uh, it, it's quick to ejaculate. Well, let's don't not, let's not say that. I don't want to get demonetized. Wait a minute! Don't you get Such rug burns on it before. when you use a rug? Oh, sorry. No. I can't even forget about that. Anyway, well, uh, you know what's weird is the the lowest populated city in the Bay Area is Colma, apparently. But that's not dead. really true. It's the got all the dead, dead people. Dead, dead, most yeah, part of dead people dead people. Dead. Yeah. It says there's only 1,500 Have you ever seen there. the city hall in Coma? Have you, have you ever been to the city hall in Coma? <clears throat> it looks like a mausoleum. Really? Yes. Probably is. Yeah. Yeah, it's the highest population. In of case dead people, people don't know, Coma is a city in the San, Fran in San Francisco. In the San Francisco. It's all cemeteries. And it's all yeah. cemeteries. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. All my family is there. They're all, it's all mostly military too, right? Because they still have living. on 280. They have all the you know oh, all that's, the that's white a, stone. That's thing. in San Bruno. That's in San, oh, Bruno. San Bruno. We're talking about Colma. Uh, Colma has a bunch of my mother. Cemetery. My mother and father are buried in Colma. Uh, you, you can find my father. He's got a tombstone. Um, yeah. Where's he at, Alex? Uh, yeah. Something eternal, something or okay. something. I don't know. at Holy Cross, of course. I don't know. I'll the have Catholic to, way. I have to look it up. Um, somebody sent me a picture of my father's gravestone. I guess That's trying cool. to shame me. I've yet to put one up for my mother. Have you put up your yeah. mother's tombstone, Tony? Yeah, we just had, well, we, we, we had the stone already because she's buried with my dad, of course. But it took them about three months because of COVID to get the engraving. Maybe more. So really? her name's now on the tombstone. Oh, okay. My fault. Yeah. So she's at peace. What did, before that did it say? Name of wife here. Is that I mean, what it is? It's, one of the things that I liked about New York, uh, you, know, you could see these graveyards that were back from the Revolutionary War times. And if you looked at some of the gravestones, they're very interesting uh, to see uh, uh, grave sites that had been. Go, go to Holy Cross. Anything. You'll find those back there too. They're like in the 1800s. Yeah. You know what I was going to tell you, Alex? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not too far from my mother's grave and my dad, Geraldine Ferraro was buried there. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, she probably doesn't know who she is, my mother, but she's in the same area, like, pretty much. Now, didn't uh, Geraldine Ferraro, when she ran for uh, uh, vice, I think, president. vice president, wasn't she making things out of, like, a paper uh, plate? And she was, uh, you know, putting her stuff on on it. I, I, oh, I no. believe. Really? She well, was she was knitting those hats with the beer cans. Uh, really? I'm surprised people didn't make fun of that. Yeah. The straws. That you know, it, yeah. It, yeah. it, it might have been. It was. Uh, um, yeah, it'll come to me. There was a, a black woman uh, in New York, uh, and her name used to be on the tip of my tongue. Ooh. Big heavy set gal. <laughs> and way, she was way, the one with the. We don't have part. much time, so yeah, I. Bella Abzug. Bella Abzug. Bella That's Abzug. who it was. Right. Who's? Let, oh, yeah. let me uh, let me bring up something quickly because it's towards the end of the show, so we it's not like you know like we don't want to get uh, uh, Tony on coffee, and we really don't want to get Phil on talking about Trump. But today we have the most wonderful story about Donald Trump. The toilet did, did you hear this one about toilet no. gate? Yeah, I call awesome. it. I call it toilet gate. Oh, th flushing the papers down the toilet. Yes. What? He was flushing confidential papers. You're supposed to see as, you, as president. You're supposed to keep all your papers, even the ones you scribble <clears throat> on, because those then go to the national archives, and later on they may be released to you for your library or whatever. And uh, but he, whenever he 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 tried to destroy most of his correspondence and stuff and what he did with some of it was they found the toilet was plugged up terribly and they went in and they snaked it out 
and what they found were papers he had written on. Um, he was flushing his papers down Daniel? the toilet. That's where he, and then he started, and then at the uh, rallies, he was saying, and you had to flush the toilet 10, 15 times to get the thing. Yeah, yeah. No, but actually, he gave <laughs> a speech when he was thing. running for president about uh, about Hillary and about Hillary Gate and stuff, and you shouldn't be allowed to uh, not, uh, you, you, you can't get rid of your papers. You have to hold on to your papers and blah, 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 and it's illegal to do this, not do so. And then he didn't do it. He was flushing them down the toilet. He was tearing them up. And his staff, know his staff had to tape them, them back together. And they pull them out of the toilet? Hmm? Oh, my, that's they, funny. Did they pull them out of the toilet and tape them back together? Well, no, no, no. They pulled those out of the toilet. I think it was paper mache by that time. But some of them he tore up and threw in, in the trash. And then they'd have to go get them. And then, like, I guess they had, like, a jigsaw party or something and put the pages back together again with tape. Hmm. And then he oh, took, then he took a lot of job. his papers. He took a lot of the papers <laughs> you, you, with him to Mar-a-Lago, which he, he wasn't supposed you, to do. If you, clean, if you clean up the piece of paper, put, they have a scanner, like copiers, that with software will put it back together for you. You lay it on the... Mm -hmm. On the on like somebody tore up a I'm gonna kill somebody note or something. Okay. You can lay the pieces down, hit the button, and the software like a copier spits it out all the way it was originally. And also in the speech he was giving about Hillary Clinton, he said, uh, "If you if you don't have anything to hide, why are you destroying your messages and stuff like that?" So I mean, if he wasn't trying to hide anything, why was he tearing them up and flushing them down the toilet? Hillary up for him. They also say that they don't have the, 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 the telephone calls during the 45 or 50 minute period, the hour and a half period after uh, the uh, insurrection at the Capitol. And he says that's because I didn't make any calls. I didn't get any calls. And, and it's known that members of Congress did call him. I understand that he took some of the silverware from the White House before he left. No, that was Mrs. Lincoln. <laughs> he probably would take the Civil War. Let's take it. Wouldn't that story come out yesterday? Uh, t today. Oh, today came out. Oh, okay. that's no, probably, I heard something yesterday. That's probably oh, really? why they released that story about Biden giving out free crack pipes. It's kind of diversionary again. <laughs> no, Biden did that on his own. Biden <laughs> said the N-word. Yeah. They said that was all bullshit. But it was, it, you know, I mean, it's just it's, it just gets funnier and funnier. You know, it does. It's just ridiculous. So, uh, they're spending thirty. How many millions on uh, these these packages with uh, 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 chapstick and crack pipes and and other stuff? And now they're it's spending the same bullshit. amount of money, and they took the crack pipes out. So it's you got to go to the Gabnet store if you want a crack pipe. But wait, wait, what's what's this with crack pipes? Uh, there was some all bullshit. No, it was a package yeah. that they're giving uh, yes. homeless drug addicts, uh, and and it was supposed to contain a crack pipe, and uh, as one of the items, you know, it's it's like a gift bag. Uh, on the side of the Trump pipe, it says Trump, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, uh, I, I, you know, they've suggested that we supply uh, heroin addicts with uh, needles, and the reason for that is is because some of the needles get dirty and. People die of infection and so on and so forth. So it's better to just give it to them rather than have a bunch of people die. Neither but I don't know how that applies to crack pipes. Well, you know? there, there was, uh, if, you, if you look around, there's a story today about these gift packages that are going to homeless and drug addicts. Mm -hmm. And a crack pipe was one of the things that was in the package. And so people complained. I don't know who complained, but Hurry a up. lot of people. Yeah. And they took the crack pipe out. But I want to know what they're going to do with the crack pipes. They're going to probably make us yeah. wear them under our masks. Okay, we got to go here. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> Thanks for sending Tony coffee. No problem. Anytime. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much. Me. Always love having you here. It always yeah. makes it a pleasant evening. Tony, <laughs> uh, why don't you smoke some pot? It might slow you down. Okay. Mm. I uh, never tried drugs. Uh, 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 you're too bad. Uh, uh, caffeine's a drug. If anybody yeah. needed drugs, it's you. 
Um, Ritalin might be a good one for you. Anyway, uh, 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 Ray, thank you so much for calling. I always love having you here. Phil, thank you for joining us tonight and adding to the festivities. Uh, Jeff, thank you. And thank you, Kevin. I mean, Brian, rather. I already said thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Brian, for having joined us this evening. Uh, why don't you all give a, wave, a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave bye bye, 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 bye back to you. There we go. There they go. That's our citizen panel, ladies and gentlemen. They're out of here. They're toast. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection, and some of these same fine people will probably show up on the intersection. And why don't you? Uh, give him a call. Uh, he uses Skype, and it's GabNet Live if you're calling using Skype. I'll be back again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. By the way, get vaccinated if you haven't. If you haven't, wear a mask. If you haven't worn a mask, don't get near me. See you later. Bye.